Um, now, does this does this give you access to the English word bottom, or does it give you access to one specific usage of the English word bottom? Oh, definitely one, one specific one usage. One specific usage. And if someone were looking in your backpack for your straw and they were just looking in the top part, um, would you feel very comfortable about pointing to this one? Um, you might think that's an odd place to keep a straw, but <laughs> in, in the bottom of, you know, the bottom, you know, um, back, okay. Uh, I want to show you the gulf between this and language. This is not language. The link between this and bottom is a link that distorts the meaning of bottom. The link between this and stomach uh, is fraught with problems and peril. And in terms of primary or secondary, uh, wipe here is primary, but it could also be what? <coughs> <laughs> it also could be clean, it could be polish, it could be what? Erase. Erase. Uh, it could be a lot of things. So uh, my, my suggestion here is that there's a metaphor attached to most of these, and there is memory attached to that metaphor. And after you, I mean, yesterday I saw a board composed of these Mayor Johnson figures, and they and they, there were more than 200 of them. Now, you're not going to have trouble with the translucency factor here for these, but how would you do with 200 of these? You know, my translucency factor is not stressed yet, but I bet in 30 or 40 more of these, I would start having translucency issues. Uh, okay, now, make up a sentence. All of you make up a sentence in your mind using the words here. I'll use word, I need you. Can we make up other sentences? <laughs> you hurt me. I, you know, you can go around and make up sentences. Now try to make up sentences. You see, it's the link, it's the word. It's our reading ability. It's to that printed word because now you don't want to say, uh, this one, uh, this one, um, this one. Do you see how the language sort of floats away now? All right, this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make this an important point in a few minutes. Now, here is a page from the justly famous series by uh, uh, Goosen, Zelda, and Crane. It's engineering in the classroom. Where this is for post-school environments. And uh, this is great work, and I'm not going to talk about the work itself. The only thing I want to talk about is the transparency, translucency, and opaqueness issues. Um, remember, remember the lexigrams? Romsky and Sevchek had very good teaching records with the lexigrams. What I am attacking is iconicity. I'm not attacking this work because it works. I've seen people use these successfully. I'm attacking the notion of iconicity as being a very powerful force. And to do this, I'm going to do something to you. I'm going to ask you to tell me what these mean. Uh, I'd like you to distinguish between 8 and 19. Well, here's the comb over again. Um, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, I thought this kind of happiness as compared to this kind of happiness was sort of like therapy versus drugs. Uh, uh, you know, a half dozen Valiums can do this to you, but, uh, you know, six weeks with a therapist might do this for you. Uh, there is a color coding thing that says the one, uh, that number eight is a verb and number 19 is an adjective. And that would make it. That might make uh, it as a matter of fact, number 19 is a verb here. No, it's got blue on it. It's described as a describing word. Uh, it's, it's color coded with a B. So that means that they're. A B. In the right corner. Okay, well, actually, when I show you what this is, you're going to find that it's a verb. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I mean, you know, I, 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 well, well, I'm going to show it to you in just a minute, and, and we're going to see. Okay, um, what's the difference between um, 9 and 13? Money and pay. Money and pay. We're looking for 
of the okay. deep And then semantic. also, if you had the color coding, we would, seriously would be doing a lot better because if, if nine is yellow, <laughs> then oh. that means it's definitely money. It's got to be a noun. And if 13 is, I can't see. The well, uh, I'll tell you, um, uh, pay or buy. I'm going to show it to you in a minute, and <laughs> it's not going to be like that. No, no, no. Now just give me a break here. Okay. Uh, give me a break. Okay. Uh, what do you think this one means? Which one? Oh, this one. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to reveal the color coding now for you. Except it won't be color coding. I'm going to reveal what these actually are. You see, this is enjoy, and I forgot. Uh, you know. Okay. This is. Um, this is enjoy, and this is I'd like that, please. So that was the like, the verb. That's why it's pink, because of the like. Okay. The hard part is, is that we're applying rules that were designed initially for words for the adolescents that are now in phrases. Uh, well, what I would like to say is that pictures are even less iconic and less transparent for phrases oh, than they are for yeah. words. Yes. Yeah. Uh, people think that, you know, that these bit Okay. Oh, mm -hmm. Too expensive, and it costs. Let's do a structural analysis of the metaphor for is that all. Well, uh, you know, the question that most people think when, if I use that one, then when we're back here, is they think, do you want a pizza? <laughs> um, is that all? What's going on here is that there are a series of dots in the world, and this is a line that encloses dots, and the question is, do you have the set of all dots, or do you have a subset? <laughs> that would be a mathematical summary. Of it. Um, but you see what's happening here? Uh, I, I think this metaphor is very difficult. Uh, can I see that here you are? Um, guys, literacy produces the illusion of translucency for readers. If I'd have asked you to color code this and divide up into groups and give me teaching protocols for this group and that group. We'd have all come back in a very makey-takey way. And you wouldn't have noticed, I don't think, that there is a huge chasm between this stuff and language. And I think that chasm is, um, well, I think it's quite a chasm. And I think it's hidden from us because literacy produces the illusion of translucency for readers. Do, are we together there? Uh, do we read automatically? Can we stop reading? You know, they say that you know, they, you know, if every uh, three minutes they produce a 100 frames on a movie that says drink Coca-Cola, and you know, you interview the people after the movie, and they say, "What's on your mind?" I don't know. I think I'd like a Coke. Um, uh, well, the, you know, we, we read even without knowing that we're reading, and I don't think we can divorce ourselves from the experience of reading here. And uh, literacy produces the illusion of translucency for readers, and I think that having a half dozen of these might be hard in certain cognitive ways. But what I'm primarily talking about here is the, the chasm between the graphic and actual language. Folks, language is an, is it language, is it a transparent <coughs> medium or an opaque medium? Okay. Opaque. And efforts to make it transparent, make it a transparent medium through graph, uh, are 